also want to make announcement there will be elections in November for all auxiliary positions and also for the trustees. The officers, nobody wants to be an officer of the church. And you know, pastor is not open for voting and election. But all auxiliaries, we will have nominations and elections during the month of November. I'm asking you to pray much for those in the South who've been devastated by Hurricane Helene. They've lost everything. Roads are gone. Houses are gone. People's lives are gone. They need our prayers. They need help. They need relief. And some of them need only what God can give in the name of the Lord. Remember District Elder Johnson, who is traveling. Pray much for him that the Lord will bless him and watch over him. Take him safely. Bring him back home safely in the name of Jesus. Also, I have to announce that next Sunday, I won't be here. Second Sunday. Preaching and Elder Ronald Golden will be in charge. All right. So I want you to support the ministry even when I'm not here. I have to preach in uh, Maryland, somewhere in Maryland, Landover, Maryland on Sunday morning for Pastor Tyrone Purdy. So pray the Lord will bless in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Claude. Praise the Lord. If nobody else is praying for me, I know Claude praying for me. Claude will call me up and tell me, I'm praying for you, Pastor. I say, Claude, I feel it. <laughs> and I need your prayers. The following week, I'll be in uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida for the Bishop's uh, Council. It's uh, Wednesday the 16th to the 18th, but I will be back home on third Sunday to preach and minister to the saints. All right. Now, I want to do this. Uh, Mother Sandra Davis, would you stand, please? I've been calling her sister Sandra Davis, and and then I found out her age, which I'm not going to tell you. And the custom here is uh, all women when they reach their and uh, when hold on hold on hold on when when uh, I found out how old mother sister, mother Sandra Davis was, I said, "You look so young." I didn't know. But I want it to be known to this congregation from here on out, uh, she is to be addressed as Mother Sandra Davis. And let's give God praise for her. She is a faithful member of this ministry. She supports with her prayers, with her labor, and with her finances. And we appreciate her in the name of Jesus. Now there's a few of you all that's just about a month or so, six months away, praise <laughs> When you get to be 70, we'll discuss it in the name of Jesus. All right, I need you to pray for me. I haven't preached in three weeks. The last time I preached was uh, September the 15th. My pipe's all rusty, praise the Lord. I might have to take a teaspoon of anointed oil Praise the Lord. Lubricate. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But if you pray for me, the Lord will bless us as only he can. I have two passages of scripture to read to you from the New Testament books of Matthew, also Luke. They're relatively short, so I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And if you turn to me, uh, with me to Matthew chapter 4. I will read from verses 18 through 22, and then I will continue to read from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. That is Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 18. When you have it, will you say amen? Before I read the scripture, I'm supposed to announce that there is the taste of refuge right after communion downstairs. $10 ticket price, $12, mine's discounted, $10, uh, $12, and uh, to let you know that I made 25 pounds of uh, 
potato salad, and it's good too. So I just want you to know, children, uh, 12 and under, $6. All right, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. When you have it, say amen. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Chapter 5 in the book of Luke, verse 1. And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and asked him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and the net broke. Let the church say amen. You may be seated. Bow your heads with me. Lord God, our Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We come, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise. We honor you. We glorify you. Lord, thank you for being good to us. Thank you for blessing our lives above what we could measure. Oh, Lord, we come before you. We have praised your name. We come to worship you. We come to lift you up. Lord, you know our needs today. Remember the names on the prayer list. Remember the unspoken requests. Look on our world, Lord God, that's full of violence and savagery, hatred. Oh, God, my Father, and yet you're still working in the lives of men and women. A prayer is that you touch someone today, Lord. Turn someone from the Holy Ghost. Reclaim their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch out your hand today and minister to your people. Let the word of God dwell richly into their hearts. Lord, and send your anointing power because your anointing destroys the yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ, do it for your glory, I pray. In Jesus' name, and let everyone say amen. I want to speak to you from the subject this morning, casting, mending, and washing. Can you repeat after me? Casting, mending, and washing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. These two texts give a glimpse into the lives of four men prior to their call by Jesus Christ to become his disciples. All of them were fishermen. All of them whose livelihood and their means of support came from their ability to catch fish. Every day they would enter into their boats and sail onto the lake of Gennesaret, or as Matthew records, the Sea of Galilee, to utilize their professional skills to catch fish in order to sustain their families. Their occupation as fishermen was one that was labor intensive. It wasn't an easy 
job. It was physically strenuous. Although the lake was near to where they lived and to their homes, and the lake was full of fish, but they had to have a knowledge on the currents and the tides. They had to know how to fish, where to fish, and when to fish. They had to have the skill set in order to get the fish from the sea and into their boats. Some days and some nights, they fished and they were successful in bringing home a catch. Other times, after casting nets, repeat. They were not used, they didn't use modern day technology, a rod and a reel, because then you could only catch one fish at a time. But they were swinging out large nets, attempting to catch multitudes of fish. You swing out the net and the net goes down. And hopefully it will enclose the fish. And then you can pull the net together at the bottom and bring in your fish. There's only one problem with that. You don't know where the fish are. You're casting out your net in hope. You're casting it out in faith believing that the Lord is going to allow you to bring home a catch. First of all, I want to talk to you about casting stage of life. Praise the Lord. Casting your net as a person who's trying to catch something better than what they have right now. Casting your net, trying to get ahead, thinking about the future and the moves and the decisions that I'm going to have to make going to reach my goal. Praise the Lord. So you get up every morning and you cast your net in the sea of life, trying to find something that will help you, something that will cause you to achieve your hopes and dreams. You cast your net over and over again, telling yourself that today I'm going to get something better. Today I'm going to catch something to get me closer to my dream. I'll cast my net because I know that God has something greater for me in my life. But sometimes you have to make a radical change from what you used to do. Praise the Lord. When I first came here, that's all I heard. We used to do this and we used to do that. But just because you used to do it don't mean you have to keep on doing it. Especially if you're not catching nothing in your net. Praise the Lord. Yeah, how you used to be. Well, I've been like this and I'm not going to change. Well, stay the way you are. Praise the Lord. You have to live with you, not me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to give you some encouragement. Praise the Lord. I'm too old to change. Praise the Lord. You can change, but it starts in your mind. Praise the Lord. You got to think for a change. You got to allow the new things to come into your mind and get rid of those old thoughts. Praise the Lord. The methods that you used to use and you have to become what the Lord wants you to be. Praise God. I'm happy the way the Lord is working in my life. I'm happy. Aren't you happy? Praise the Lord. Say amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Every day something new. Praise the Lord. Every day the Lord giving you new thoughts. He's giving you new ideas. Praise the Lord. He's giving you new directions and new guidance. It is an experience that I love. Praise God. Even when I don't know what to do, the Lord show you what to do. Praise the Lord. You don't know how to make a decision. The Lord give you the decision and you make it. You make it in faith. You make it 
believing that the Lord is going to work things out. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 18, Jesus is walking by the seaside and he sees Peter and he sees his brother Andrew and they're casting their nets into the sea fishing. And he calls them and says, come now and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Praise the Lord. You know, when you read the Bible, it's not about you and what you can do. It's about Jesus Christ and what he can do. I'm going to make you. I'm going to show you how to do it to be successful. I'm going to change your occupation from casting nets into the water. And I'm going to teach you how to win souls for the kingdom of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus is saying to them that I'm going to transition your lives. So many people are trying to make their lives what they want them to be. Instead of allowing Jesus to make their lives what he wants them to be. I'll tell you, it's a lot easier because the scripture of a transgressor is hard. Praise the Lord. As much as sin is advertised as being independently satisfaction, praise the Lord. The way of a sin is hard. Praise God. But the way of Jesus Christ is easy. You just let the Lord lead you. After Jesus spoke to them and told them to follow me, praise God. The Bible says they immediately left their nets. Praise the Lord. Now, you think about it, they're fishermen. That's all they've done from their youth. And Jesus shows up and says, come on, follow me. And they're so mesmerized by this personality called Jesus Christ that they walk away from their livelihood without, not, without knowing what their future holds. But when Jesus is leading you, you don't have to worry about it because the Lord will make a way somehow. Somehow the Lord will make a way somehow. Well, praise the Lord. They left their nets and followed him. The phrase they left their ship and followed him implies that there was a separation with their past lives and they left from one thing in order to pursue. There was a change in the focus. It's no longer me catching fish to provide for my family because I believe if I follow Jesus, he's going to supply my every need according to his riches and glory. Oh, praise God. I didn't know where this message was going, but I'm going with it. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. There was a change in their mindset there was a change in their vocation they weren't fishing for fish they were fishing for men and women using the gospel of jesus christ praise god these men after being exposed to jesus and having a radical change from their past lives as fishermen now they have transitioned to become followers of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, what if that was you today and uh, Jesus came to your job and told you, I want you to come and follow me now. Praise the Lord. I can see the expression on some of you. Jesus, can you talk to me on lunch? J Jesus, do you know how much money I'm making? Praise the Lord. you would be coming up with all kinds of excuses. Because what Jesus demanded was total loyalty, total commitment. That followed him, if you're going to be my disciple and come after me, you got to deny yourself. You got to pick up the cross and follow me. The cross represents suffering. The cross represents affliction. The cross represents death. Well, oh, praise the Lord Jesus saying you got to die to your own life. Let me present a new life for you to live. Well, oh, thank you, Jesus.
So, sometimes you have to make a decision to leave something. Sometimes you got to make a decision to leave a person, a place or a thing. But you got to follow Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the name of God. Uh, after Jesus talks to Peter and Andrew and they begin to follow him, Jesus continues down the seashore. And he sees two other brothers and their father, praise God. And it was James and John, the son of Zebedee. Yep. They were in the ship that they owned, praise God. And the Bible say they were mending their net. So, well, thank you, Jesus. They were preparing for another fishing trip. The second point I want to make to you this morning is the mending aspect of our lives. The word mending means to make fit. It means to make sound. Mending means to repair, to mend that which has been torn. So, oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. And as people cast out their nets in hopes of receiving something good or something better in life, we also use a lot of time and effort on trying to mend our lives. So, oh, praise the Lord. Enough so that we appear to others that our lives are together. You know it's true. We try to appear that our lives are complete, that our lives are everything that is good. But in reality, we are broken and we are marred. And I don't expect to get an amen. Uh, we project and portray to others that I got it going on. So every day we pick up our nets and be of examining it for rips and examining it for tear. So because we don't want other people to see our failure. We don't want other people to see our weaknesses and our vulnerability. So, so we fervently try, praise God, to cover up the rips in our net. So we want everyone around us to believe that we are complete. So we want everyone that looks at us to think we are every with hope. So we try to portray strength when in fact we're living in weakness. So we try to project that we have it going on when we're falling apart at the sea. So, and if you won't say amen, I will. So, amen. So, God sees it. So, God sees the rips and the tears so, in our lives. So, praise the Lord. You see it and I see it. Uh, and the people around us see it also. So, See, we are hurting, praise God. We are vulnerable. We are in despair, praise God, in distress. So God sees all of us right where we are. I don't care what kind of suit we put on, what kind of tie we wear and the pin we put in it or the dress that we wear. God sees us just how we are. Man looks at the outward appearance. Man looks at you and say, look at that saint. They're an example of holiness. But he only sees what's on the inside, outside. But God sees the heart. Well, thank you, Jesus Christ. That's why I don't put on a air. Yep. That's why I don't have a pretense. Yep. I don't care what people think about me. Yep. I'm trying to make it to heaven. Yep. I'm trying to make the rapture not be on your to-do list. Yep. I'm trying to please the law yep. because God saved me. Yep. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yep. Well, thank you, Jesus Christ. So, and I want to know where does it state in the scripture that we are to fix ourselves. 
So where does it say we are to mend ourselves? So if you're broken and hurting with rips and tears in your life, you need to let Jesus help you. So praise the Lord Jesus said in Matthew, Come unto me, all ye that labor, so all ye that are weary, carrying heavy burdens. So come unto me, take my yoke, and learn of me. So for I am meek and lowly. Yep. And you will find a rest for your soul. So, praise the Lord. People say, I slept good last night. Uh, but how did your soul sleep? Yep. All day long. Yep. How did your mind sleep? Yep. Praise the Lord. Yep. Jesus will come in your life and give you happiness and joy. Take away the sadness yep. and give you rejoicing in the God of your salvation. Yep. Some believers spend too much time. Yep. Well, thank you, Jesus, trying to mend their nets. So, yep. trying to mend their lives. So, yep. when that is the Lord's responsibility. Yep. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Uh, Jesus, after being tempted in the wilderness, so, yep. traveled to Galilee where he taught the people in the synagogue. So when he came to Nazareth, he entered into the synagogue. Yep. On the Sabbath day, he stood up to read the scripture. Picked up the scroll and turned to the book of Isaiah chapter number 61. Yep. And the words were, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yep. Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Yep. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yep. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yep. And recovering of sight to the blind. Yep. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Yep. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yep. You came in your own broken heart. Yep. You can't recover your own blindness. Yep. You can't set your own self free. Yep. Jesus said you shall know the truth. Yep. And the truth shall make you free. Yep. The truth will break off the shackles. Yep. The truth will break off the handcuffs. Yep. The truth will come into your spirit. Yep. And into your mind. Yep. And set you free. Yep. Do I have a witness in the house? Yep. Praise the Lord. Is somebody glad yep. that Jesus loosed them? Yep. Is somebody glad yep. that Jesus brought them out of the miry clay? Yep. Oh, yes, he did. Yep. Took away that old man. Yep. Took away the cigarettes. Yep. Took away the drugs. Yep. Took away the nightlife. Yep. Put joy in my soul. Yep. Peace in my mind. Yep. Clapping in my hands. Yep. Shouting in my feet. Yep. A praise in my mouth. That's why I say hallelujah. Anyhow, don't let your troubles get you down. When trouble come your way, lift your head up high and say hallelujah. Anyhow, hallelujah. Anyhow, oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, the disciples left the life that they knew. And they followed Jesus Christ. The lives that they used to live were routine. Every day fishing. Every day washing. Every day mending. Their life were now with Jesus. Was full of expectation. It was full of hope. To put them in a new position, the disciples of Christ. So, praise the Lord. He said, I came in order 
for you to have life and life more abundantly not just common life not just casual life but abundant life in me oh thank you jesus the lord is anything but routine god is sovereign he's omnipotent he's omniscient he's omnipresent everywhere with all power at the same time he knows everything he saw my tears put them in a bottle he came in my room and soothed my soul he told me everything gonna be all right everything it's gonna change I'm with you I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you I'm with you till the end oh hallelujah the Lord is anything but routine and the galaxies no two stars are alike praise God people on the earth are alike we are unique and wondrously made oh praise the lord now let me wrap this up peter and andrew uh, were fishing casting their nets trying to catch something trying to get enough fish that they could sell and eat oh thank you jesus now james and john Yep. They are mending their nets, yep. trying to prepare them, yep. trying to restore them yep. for the next time yep. they go fishing. Yep. I can't fish with a hole in my net. Yep. I can't fish with a gap in my net. Yep. So they're mending it, yep. trying to get ready for the next day. Yep. But think about this. Up. Jesus said, if you follow me, up, I'll mend your life. Up. I'll mend your mind. Up. I'll mend your spirit. Up. I'll mend your body. Up. When we get to Luke chapter 5, uh, oh, praise the Lord. Up. It summarizes both texts. Up. In Matthew, Peter and Andrew up, casting their net. Up. James and John are but in Luke chapter 5 Jesus is followed by the people they want to hear a word from the Lord Jesus goes down to the seashore there are two boats there. the fishermen are not in their boat the Bible says they're out washing their nets oh praise the Lord the, the men are washing their nets to remove the fish scales, the, to remove the algae, the, to remove the debris the, that has collected in their net. The, they're trying to wash off the, the past remembrance of sin, the, trying to wash off the, our failures, the, wanting to forget about the, the days we didn't catch nothing. Um, we live having our lives um, failures and mistakes um, some are not willing to admit um, but trying to act like um, it never existed um, you're lying to yourself um, you can't lie to God because um, he already knows it um, the disciples um, are washing their nets um, because they know um, after a night of fishing, they didn't catch nothing. Time to go out a little further so I can speak to the people. He uses the boat as a pulpit. The people are gathered to the shore. Jesus teaches the people. And when he's finished, he looks at Peter and said, I saw you and your partner casting your nets. I saw your partner mending their nets. I saw all of you 
uh, washing your nets. Uh, but Brother Peter, uh, go out a little further. Uh, and when he got out there, uh, Jesus said, uh, I want you to cast your nets. Up and catch a lot of fish. Up and Peter said, up, Master, up, we've been toiling all night. Up, we say to Jesus, up, I've been toiling all life. Up, I don't have nothing to show. Up, but Peter said, Lord, up, I know there's nothing there, up, but I'm going to do it up, out of obedience. Up, swung the net. Up. And when the net went in the water, ha, Jesus says, up, to want you to watch. Up. Now notice something. Up. Jesus isn't a fisherman. Up. His father was a carpenter. Up. He's telling a professional fisherman up, where to throw the net. Up. And when he threw the net in the water, up, the Lord told the fish, up, get in the net. Uh, don't tell me uh, that God won't make a way for you. Uh, don't tell me uh, that God can't do anything. Uh, he told the fish, uh, get in the net. Uh, and when Peter tried to pull it, uh, he couldn't pull it up by himself. Uh, he called out to John, uh, called out to James, uh, come and help. Uh, they try to pull the fish, the net uh, in the boat, uh, and the net broke, uh, but not until uh, both boats were full of fish. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to keep on uh, casting. Uh, I'm going to keep on uh, mending. Uh, I'm going to keep on washing because uh, I know uh, the Lord uh, going to make a way for me. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mending. Now, when it comes to sins, we can't wash away our sins. When it comes to forgiveness, God has to do that. The song said, what can wash away my sin? And the answer came back, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Second question, what can make me whole again? Same answer, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other, no other, no other help I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. The Lord gave me that message for this house. Because somebody had been casting and the nets have been empty. Somebody has prepared a net for the next day for mending, and their net is still empty. Somebody's trying to wash off something, and their net is empty. But Jesus Christ loved us so that he went to a cross on Calvary, willingly let him take his life, shed his blood for you. And for me, praise the Lord. We're living in the last day. You have to be blind, deaf, and dumb. Not to see the writing on the wall. Hallelujah. Israel fighting the Hutus in Yemen to the south. Gaza. Right next to them with Hamas. Now they're fighting, praise God, Hezbollah to the north. Praise the Lord. The enemies of Israel sworn that their mandate is to destroy them as a nation. Iran still sending rockets. And the U.S. is pleading with Netanyahu 
please don't bomb their nuclear reactor again. They did it one time because they know it'll be a widespread war in the Middle East. And it's going to be. Praise the Lord. Not only do we see the uh, politics of the world, but look at our weather. Praise the Lord. Storm after storm after storm. It's the word of God coming forth. It's being advertised. Witness on CNN, Fox, AccuWeather. Praise the Lord. The Lord is saying to people, I'm soon to come. I'm soon to come. I'm coming back for a church that's waiting for me. I'm coming back for baptized believers in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, living for me. If I were you, I'd make my mind up. And I would say, Lord, I, I don't want to miss the rapture. I don't want to be lost. And get on your knees and call on the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Somebody, I don't have nobody to tie with me. Tie with yourself. The Holy Ghost will tie with you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. It is time we're near the coming of the Lord. And men and women should be aware. Jesus coming back without notification. It won't be a news flash. The preacher won't announce Jesus is coming back next Monday. Praise the Lord. He's going to come and those that are ready are going to go back with him. And those that are not ready will be left to go through the great tribulation. That. If I were you, I'd make up my mind and say yes to the Lord. God bless you. Will you give the Lord a hand praise? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Will you stand to your feet? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. Praise the Lord. 